Hello and welcome back to the channel guys. Today we will be discussing about arrays in Go. So let us try to first define what an array is. An array is a data structure in computer science which consists of a collection of elements and each of these elements within the array can be identified uniquely by something known as an index into the array. This will be clearer as we proceed. Now why do we actually need arrays in our programs? Let us understand this by means of an example. Suppose we are building software for a, a trading application and we are dealing with the prices of various commodities. So suppose I have a commodity one um, and I store the price of that commodity in the variable price one. Let it be any value. Uh, I have another commodity uh, which is commodity 2 and I store its price in price 2 and the price for the third commodity is stored in price 3 and so on. As you might have guessed as and when I keep on increasing the number of commodities I have to keep track of more and more variables and this thing will start getting out of hand very very quickly. Imagine we have to deal with the prices of 100 commodities. Imagine tomorrow that the number of commodities get increased to 1000. What will we do? But we really don't need to worry because we have arrays in all programming languages and also in Go which can help us store and access all of these values by means of just a single variable. Let me show you how do we actually go about declaring an array in Go. We will start by giving a name to the variable which is going to hold all of our prices. So let's call it prices. Then I use the shorthand assignment operator of Go. Then in square bracket, I need to specify the size of the array which I need. In case of this example to store price 1, 2 and 3, let me just declare an array of size 3. Next, we need to tell the compiler what is the data type of the elements that this array will store. In our case, let it be integer. We'll consider price to be integers and not flo float for the sake of simplicity. So I say that the type will be integer and then I need to provide within curly braces all of the elements which will reside in the array. So as we saw in our case, our prices were 123, 352 and 1. 2, 3, 2. And that's how you declare arrays in Go. You give a variable name, you give the shorthand assignment, you specify the size, the data type and the initi initializer list of the array. Now before I can go about actually running this program, I need to use the variable somewhere. So I will just say fmt.printf prices and I will specify a percentage V, uh, print formatter, backslash N, and then I will say prices. Now, let me try to run this program. And we see that our array gets printed and our array contains three values, which are 123, 352, and 1232. Now, one thing to note here is that since in this case, you are already specifying what values to initialize the array with, you might as well be able to skip the size of the array because the compiler will anyways know that the array will hold three values. So I can get rid of this three here and I can put a triple dot in place of the three or in a general case, the size of the array. So what are these triple dots? Uh, we call them ellipsis. That's the technical term for that. So this is the variadic operator of Go, which tells the compiler that variable number of arguments can be provided in this case. So we could have initialized the uh, array with three values or four values or 10 values or any number of values in this case. So uh, let me actually show you that if I uh, say three here and I provide uh, one more value here, it will fail to compile. But uh, if I provide a triple dot here, which is the ellipsis or the variadic operator, I can see that we don't have problem assigning any number of values within this array. Now, just one fact that I'd like to mention before we proceed is that like in any other programming language, the elements of the array are stored 
contiguously in the memory or in the RAM. So till now we saw that at line number 16, we were able to print the entire contents of the array. Now, how do we actually go about accessing a particular element of the array? So for that, let me simply put three print statements here. I'll format this for readability. And we can see that we are planning to print the first, second and the third element of this prices array. So to print the first element, I would say prices and then I will say square bracket and then I will say zero. To access the second element, I would say prices square bracket one and to access the third element, I would say prices square bracket two. I go ahead and run this and I can see that the first element is 123. The second element is 352 and the third one is 1232. Just really make note of the fact that to start accessing the array, we start from the first element and the first element is always indexed at zero, the next element at one, the next element at two and so on in case of larger arrays. Again, this is very important for programmers to access the first element of the array, we use the index zero. Next, let me try to declare an array without an actual initializer list. So I can say something like var products, which is the name of our array. Then we have the size of the array and the type of the elements that this array would hold. And in this case, they would be strings. Now what happens when I actually try to print this array? Let me run format again. And I'd say products and products here as well. And let me run this. And I see that products is empty, which means that it has no contents. Uh, beside that, I would actually also like to print the length of the array. So let me say len products and let me specify it here as length colon percentage v. I hit, okay, let me put a comma just for formatting. I hit run. And we see that the length of products is three, but we don't see any elements in the product array. Now, why is that? Because we didn't provide any elements. So the compiler really doesn't know what are the contents of the products array. So all of the three elements which are inside the products array have been initialized to the zero values of string data type, which are simply empty strings. What I'll do next is I'll actually try to populate this array one by one. So let me copy this here and let me say products at zero. This is the same way that we had accessed the prices array earlier. Notice that here we were simply making use of the value or reading the value, but now we plan to write to the value of products at zero. So I say products at zero is equal to, let's say, bronze, for, for example. Uh, next, I could say products at one equal to something. Let's say for this case, silver and products at two is equal to gold. Now, let me try to replicate this print statement. I format the code. I go ahead and run this. And we can see that the length of the array is maintained at three. And we can see that our array is full with, filled with three values, which are bronze, silver, and gold. Also, you should by this time make note of the fact that arrays in Go could be of any type. Like we had one which is of type string. We had one which is of type integer. And seriously, there's no limit. Any valid Go data type, primitive or user defined can be used here. Let's actually try to build an array of arrays and we'll call this one a matrix. So I declare an array called matrix and okay, so this is going to be a two by two matrix. We want our matrix to be an array of two arrays. So I say that my matrix will have two elements and then each of the two elements will also be an array. So I'll declare an other array here, which is of size two and which has a data type of integer. So what is it that I just did here? 
I declared an array called matrix which contains two elements and each of these two elements again is an array of two elements which are capable of holding integer values. Now what happens when I actually go ahead and try to print this? We see that matrix get printed. It is an array and this array again contains two arrays which hold two integers each. And in this case, all of the elements are zeroed out to the default values or the zero values of integer type, which is zero. So let's go ahead and try to put in some values within the matrix. Okay, so matrix of zero, we want it to be an array of two elements and we want the contents to be one and two. And the same way, we will put in the second element of the matrix which is an array of two integers having the value three and four. Let's run this. And I can see that the matrix has been populated. Next, we have a very important concept. And if you are coming from another programming language background, you really have to make sure you pay attention to this. And the point I want to make here is that arrays in Go are values and they are not references. And what I mean will be clear by means of the next two examples. Suppose I have an array which comprises of two integer elements, let's say one and two. And then I assign the same thing to B. Now, the point is that B does not refer to A in any case, but B stores a copy of A. Now, if you are coming from a programming background of C, C++ or Java, this would be something very new for you. So, like I said, arrays are values in Go and not references. Uh, let me show you by means of the example. So if B0, I put it equal to B9 and then I go ahead and try to print both of these arrays. Let me actually just uh, bring in some code. And if I hit run, okay, we can see at the bottom of the screen, we have the array A, which we initialize to one and two. And let me also put these print statements. Uh, yeah right after the creation of both a and b so we can see the difference so if i go ahead and hit run okay so these are the lines or the output which concerns us so we can see that after a and b have been declared we see that a has the values one and two and that's correct we initialized a to contain one and two and b after line 35 also contains the values one and two now, after line 39, we set the first value of the array B equal to 9. So, if we print both the arrays after B, we see that the value of A is still the same, 1, 2, while the first value of B has changed to 9. Now, why I especially wanted to point it out is that this does not happen the same way in C++ and Java. And if you are coming from programming, backgrounds in C++ and Java, you should really pay attention to this fact. The last thing we'll discuss here is how to iterate over an array. Uh, so I'll mostly get rid of some of the bloat over here and we'll start by writing a for loop. If you haven't watched the video on for, do watch it by clicking the i button above. We begin by saying for i colon equal to zero i stays less than the length of in this case let us use the products array and we say i plus plus we give the curly braces and then inside this we say fmt dot print ln and we print i as well as products i I go ahead and format and run this program and we see uh, for some reason the output is red this time. 
uh, we see that our elements uh, have been printed we have the index i and we have the product located at i or the string located at the index i so for zero we have bronze for one we have silver and for two we have gold now this is really okay like there's nothing special here but the creators of go really meant to make our lives very very easy so they provided us with a loop called the for range loop which can be used to iterate over arrays or for that matter over slices and maps and different types of collections in go without knowing the length of the collection so let me show you how to use the for range loop so we will make use of two variables uh, which is i which is the index and v which is the actual value and i will go ahead and say range on products and then within the for loop i can simply go on printing i as well as v uh, for the time being i'll just uh, get rid of this loop or maybe i'll just comment the print statement within the loop i click run and I, we can see that we have the same output that we got from this loop. We have zero bronze, one silver and two gold. Now the for range loops make our code very, very readable and they make our life very, very simple. Like you can see a marked difference, how neat this loop looks and how nasty and like ugly this loop looks. And like we discussed before, the creators of Go really wanted the code to be very, very readable. Now, uh, what happens if I don't make use of the variable i within the loop? Let's go on and hit run. And we see that i is declared but not used. Um, should I just get rid of the i, then what will happen? If I go ahead and hit run, well, I see that only my indices are getting printed, but not the actual value. So how do I go about fixing this? So for cases like this, Go provides a write only variable in the form of an underscore. Uh, we can only write to this value, but we can never read the value of an underscore. So if I go ahead and hit run, we can see that we have the output as expected, which are all the values within the products array. And the value of the index which we get from the for range loop is written in the write only variable which is the underscore and we don't need to read it ahead. So this is the need for range looping construct which Go provides us for easily and neatly iterating over our collections. And just before you go, all of the code that we just discussed has been updated in this GitHub repository learning Go. So do check it out if you have not checked it out already. And if you found the content of the video helpful, please do hit the like button. If you find the content of my channel helpful, please don't forget to click subscribe. You can hit the bell icon so you don't miss any new updates. And like always, thanks a lot for watching and I'll be seeing you very soon with a brand new tutorial.